Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the course on uh, analytics here. So, I will continue my correlation lecture here. So, previously dis we discussed the Carl Pearson's product movement correlation. Uh, in this lecture, I will try to discuss Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. First, I will differentiate this from the Pearson's coefficient. Then, we will test the hypothesis for RS. Then we will see does correlation institute causality and we will see how are these related. So, first we had PSN's product movement correlation that was based on interval data. Now, question comes what if the data is ordinal. Can we have the correlation? In that case, we can compare the orders or I can say we can uh, take the help of Spearman's rank coefficient to convert, it is used to convert the interval to ordinal scale. So, when we are talking about ordinal scale, we are talking about the ranks, ranks are obviously in ordinal scale. We have the ranks, rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, there is an order associated with this. So, uh, PSN's product movement correlation, this measured only the degree of linear association does there exist correlation between x or y it is based on the assumption of bivariate normality of two variables spearman's rank correlation takes into account the ranks and it measure the degree here also it measure here it measure the degree of monotone association. To clarify this, I will take an example, I will solve it before you. So, inferences on the rank correlation are distribution free, because we are just talking about the ranks, once we have given the ranks to our data, we have ranked the data, we have put our data in an ordinal scale, then we do not think about a distribution at all. So, how do we calculate? This Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is denoted by Rs, Rs, this is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n u i minus u bar v i minus v bar over summation i is equal to 1 to n u i minus u bar whole square summation i is equal to 1 to n v i minus v bar whole square. What are u i and v i here? u i and v i are the ranks, ranks for two variables, maybe I call it f for x i, this is for y i and u bar is the average rank here, v bar is the average rank for variable y. 
and this relation tells us the Spearman's rank correlation. So, there's certain steps in this. First, we do number one, we assign the ranks. Assign the ranks to a data. Then we we find the difference in ranks in ranks. And using the relation that is mentioned above, we find the Spearman's rank correlation. And also, if U i and V i are integers, Spearman's rank correlation can be given by this relation. where d i is actually the difference in ranks. So, to elaborate this further, I like to take an example here. So, this is uh, the students in the class, there are let me say the name of student is A, B, C, D. This is just the nominal scale. And we have marks uh, for the subject X and marks for subject Y. These are both interval scales. So, let me say this is my X i and this is my Y i and I have the rank U i and V i which are for x i and y i respectively here. So, if I rank them based on the marks, the student having maximum marks would get rank 1. So, I think this gets rank 1. And uh, similarly, rank 2, 21 is rank 3. We have 221. So, if there is a tie, we give the mid ranks. In this case, we have 221 values, 1 and 2. And ranks were 3 and 4. We will give 3.5 here and 3.5 here. And if there are three or four variables which have tie in them, then similarly we can also give the mid ranks. So let us suppose there are four 21s, three, four, five, six. The average would be 5.5. All the four these 21 values would be given rank 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, and 5.5. In this case, we have this tie. So this rank is given 3.5 and 3.5. After 21, we have next smaller number is 15. So three, four goes out and we have rank 5, then okay, we have 15 and 15, 2 numbers, again we have a tie, then we will put 5.5 and 5.5, so this gives rank 5 and 6, those go and we have left with rank 7, again we have a tie, 12 and 12, this 12 and this 12, then 7.5 and 7.5, 7 and 8 goes then we are left with 9 and 10. This is the rank for x i. Similarly, we will give the ranks for y i. So, in this case, 29 is the maximum after 29, 2 is 24, 3 is 23, 1, 2, 3. Uh, actually, there is a tie 23 and 23 here, so I will give 3.5 and 3.5 here. So, after 23, we have 22, 3 and 4, the rank is 5. Then 21 is again tie, we give 6.5 and 6.5. Uh, after 21, it is 15, 7 and 8 the 9 and 10. So, these are u i and v i. Then we put u i minus u bar, v i minus v bar, then we put u i minus u bar whole square. Then in the next column, I will put it here, the next column would be v i minus v bar whole square and the last column would be u i minus u bar into 
वी आई माइनस वी बार सो आई कैन हैव टोटल सम्स हेयर देन आई कैन यूज द रिलेशन टू फाइंड द रैंक टू फाइंड द स्पीयर मैं रैंक को रिलेशन टू सी द एसोसिएशन हेयर सो देन आई कैन यूज द रिलेशन दैट इज द आर एस रिलेशन इन विच वी हैव यू आई माइनस u bar and so on the relation is given in the uh, the relation given is given in the previous slide here so we can use the rs relation to find the degree of monotonous association so this is these are only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 i have just created an hypothetical data here so we had only 10 entries here so we just saw and uh, uh, assigned the rank here what if we have 100 entries what if we have 1000 or more entries we cannot do it manually very easily so i'll try to take this data in uh, microsoft excel software and uh, we'll try to solve this we'll try to do all these calculations using the software using microsoft excel so i have copied my data in microsoft excel we had student uh, name here and we have xi and yi now i'll calculate rank ui that is for xi rank that is ui then we'll calculate rank for yi yi then i'll see ui minus u bar then vi minus v bar actually this is the average value u bar and v bar then i'll put this u i minus u bar squared similarly i can put v i minus v bar squared then i'll take the product of the differences u i minus u bar into v i minus v bar so first thing is assigning ranks so how does our excel help us to do that so first i'll put some number here some number so let me uh cut this and paste it here i'll put some number here or i can even call it a serial number serial number 1 2 so if the number is 1 and 2 in excel this is one kind of plus the plus the cursor you are see looking at here this is selection tool also we have move tool the second plus this is the move tool we can put move this one the third kind of small plus is the copy tool and it will copy the format here so if i drag it here it will give this number 1 to 10 here similarly i'll insert a row here and copy this row and paste it here as well now i'll assign the ranks so let me bring this rank here now it could work so first let me work on the variable x what i'll do i select 
these two columns and go to sort and filter. So, I can custom sort, I can sort this based on the serial number, uh, actually I will sort it based on the marks x for which I need to assign the rank. So, largest numbers is given the rank 1, so I will sort it from largest to smallest. So, it has sorted it down. So, I can assign the ranks here 1, 2, 3.5, 3.5, 4.5, 7 .5, 7 .5, 9 and 10. Now, I can bring them back to the previous order. This was the purpose for which I induced this serial number here. The serial number was induced to bring it back to the previous order. So, I will sort it again, sort, custom sort based upon the serial number. Okay. Now, we have the same marks, it is in the same order, the student A 12 marks, student B 2 marks and it has this rank. So, it is sorted accordingly. Similarly, we can assign the ranks to my variable y. So, this is actually rank v i. So, let me do it again, I will sort it from largest to smallest custom sort, sort it based upon the marks y from largest to smallest, ok. Then we have got the largest number here, number 1 rank, 2, 3.5, 3.5, and 5, 6.5, 6 8, 9 and 10. Then I will bring it back to the original order. So, as for each student, for the specific student A, his marks comes correspondingly. So, let me sort it based upon the serial number from smallest to largest. So, this was the use of the sort tool which I did here to give the ranks. So, now we can hide these numbers. Even you can delete the columns if you want. So, we have got the ranks u i v i. Now, I can have the average here. I put here is equal to, when we put is equal to it gives the formula. So, this becomes the formula tab now. This in this formula cell, I need to take the average of this value. I will write A V E R A G E average. I found the value. I double click here. Now, it is asking average from which to which number. So, I will select this whole column here and press enter. So, it has averaged the ranks here, the U I bar. Similarly, I will take the average for V i. So, this is equal to average V i. This is actually now u bar and v bar. I can write it here. This is u bar, this is v bar. So, now u i minus this u i minus u bar means you take the difference. Now, I will put the formula here is equal to this value u i it is the cell D 3 minus this u bar enter. So, 7.5 minus 5.5 is equal to 2. Now, I will copy the formula before doing that. I will fix this cell u bar because this is the cell which is being uh, subtracted from the each value here. So, to fix this in this formula, I will put a dollar sign before d and 1 3. Now, column d of excel sheet and cell number 13 of this excel sheet is locked column d and cell 13. 
So, this is this one 5.5 enter. Now, if I copy the formula, it will subtract u bar from each of the u i 10 minus 5.5 you can see 10 minus d 13 9 minus d 5 9 minus d 13. So, you have got u i minus u bar. Similarly, we can have v i minus v bar. I can copy the formula here and I will just change the v i, v i is column g, column g, column g. So, I feel now the whole formula holds true here. So, this is 3.5 minus 5.5 that is minus 2. So, in this case also this is locked, v bar is locked now. Now, I can copy the formula. So, I have got u i minus u bar, v i by minus v bar. Now, I need to take the square of this value. Now, I will put here this value raised to the power 2, enter. So, this is 2 square 4. Similarly, we will have if I copy the formula, again to repeat to copy the formula, this small plus sign would copy the formula here. So, this is 4.5 square, this is 2 square, this is 2 square, this is 4.5 square, this is 3.5 square and so on. Similarly, I can calculate v bar, I will just copy the formula like this. Now, in this case, uh, he has, it was cell h for which was it was taking square, when I copy the formula, I have moved it one cell forward. So, it has taken one cell forward here from it was in cell j, it was h 3 square. If I move forward after h we have i, it has turned to i 3 square. So, in the similar way, I will copy the formula. See this is i 3 square, this is i 4 square, this is i 5 square and so on. So, we have got u i minus u bar, v i minus v bar squared. Then we need to take the product of u i minus u bar and v i minus v bar. So, this would be equal to u i minus u bar multiplied by the star is multiply, multiplied by v i minus v bar, enter. So, we have got the product 2 into minus 2 is equal to minus 4. Similarly, 4.5 into th minus 3.5 this value would come. Now, in the formula if you remember we had u r minus u bar summation in the numerator and in the denominator we have the square root of the product of u i minus u bar squared and v i minus v bar squared. The product of these two taking square root is in the new denominator in the denominator we have this product. Now, this squared value is always a positive value. Now, the direction of the correlation would depend upon these values because this is the product of the negative and positive values. Okay, these two values are being multiplied here. So, let me take this sum, this is equal to S u m sum, sum formula double click sum of these enter copy the formula here it has taken the sum of k k3 to k12 here k3 to k12 sum is taken so similarly i can copy the formula here it has taken the sum of u i by minus v bar so since this value is positive we will have a positive correlation now, is the correlation strong, intermediate or weak that we will see. This is for sure that the correlation would be positive. Now, let us see the direction of the correlation. So, this R s or rank correlation, I will put it in this cell. This is equal to
this summation divided by the product of the square root of first square root of the product of the differences this cell into this cell. So, enter. So, this is 0 0.126 is my rank correlation. So, that means if you remember 0 0.12 value is a weak correlation, but it is a positive correlation that is the subjects marks the rank uh, the subject student is getting uh, marks in subject 1 good marks in subject 1 is also getting uh, good marks in subject 2, but the correlation is very weak here it is 0 0.12. So, this tells the monotone association between the two variables that is marks x and marks y. We will attach this excel sheet for your help in notes. Safe. So, we have calculated the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient that is denoted by R s. In some books, you will find this denoted by rho. So, now we will test the hypothesis. So, first uh, the hypothesis is null hypothesis is that R s is equal to 0, there is no correlation between two variables that is no monotonous association. Now, alternative hypothesis here would be that is R s is not equal to 0. So, we calculate the value of R s and if n is less than 30, we will use a t test in which the relation for t is t is equal to R s n minus 2 1 minus R s square. So, if sample size is large we can also use the normal approximation that is normal deviate is equal to R s by variance of R s under root which is equal to R s into simply n minus 1 that is the normal distribution with 0 mean and standard deviation 1. So, this is true if n is greater than 10 at least. So, this can be used to test the hypothesis Next comes a very important aspect in correlation, very important topic here, correlation and causality. Correlation tells that there is an association between two variables. So, it does not tell the cause. So, uh, if I take, take an example, for instance, if I say when it is raining, my friend was saying when it is raining, he has an urge to have samosas with tea. So, his consumption of samosas if I take the uh, that data and rainfall if you plot the data that is that would have a positive correlation. But does that tell that rainfall cause that urge or could I say that whenever he eats samosas there is rainfall this looks stupid. So, correlation does not tell any causality. So, what is the independent variable what is the dependent variable that is not considered in correlation. So, correlation tells that association is there whether weak, moderate or strong, but if y and x have association it does not tell the direction, does not tell that x is being influenced by y or uh, y is being influenced by x this is not given by correlation coefficient. So, 
so what do we have we have a cause a cause is an explanation explanation of some characteristics some attribute some behavior of groups or individuals other entities and we have a causal effect causal effect is the finding that a change in one variable leads to change in another variable all the other things being equal the finding controlling the other variables so criteria for identifying the causal effect first thing is do we have association so uh, is there any empirically observed correlation coefficient between the dependent and independent variables then do they have time order time order is which variable come first as i took the example of rainfall and uh, urge to eat samosa which is a dependent variable what do you suppose dependent variable here would be urge to eat the spicy food so rainfall is my independent variable so please keep in mind the independent variable comes first then non spuriousness that there is no third variable or if there are third variable or the hidden variable we call that uh, the lurking variables those should be controlled if there those should be controlled actually these three are the required criteria now next i also have the mechanism and the context context is the scientific explanation or if we have some theory behind uh, the correlation coefficient which we are getting for instance the example which i have been taking the time spent on study and the marks at the grades these are positively correlated so there is a theory behind that that more the student read more he would grasp the knowledge and more well he would be able to perform in the exams so there is a context there is a scientific explanation in scientific research we have the scientific explanation for instance in manufacturing we have some physics behind each process if there is change in reference which change in cutting speed of the tool if tool is cutting the work piece the, there is a change in roughness with the change in cutting speed there might be some physics behind that that context can support our correlation coefficient whatever we are getting so these are the criteria to identify the causal effect so there are two kinds of relationship one is common response and second is confounding the common response is possibility that a change in the hidden variable is causing change in both x and y that is z is causing change in both independent and dependent variables uh confounding is possibility that either the change in the explanatory variable that is the independent variable is causing changes in the responsible variable or might be that the hidden variable is causing change in the response variable in this case my z is the hidden variable so actually in common response case there is a correlation between x and y and z is affecting both of them but in this case confounding my x is affecting y also there might be some variable z that is affecting a y that is the dependent variable so the dashed line 
uh, or dash double line arrow shows an association that there is an association between two variables. The solid arrows show a cause and effect link. The variable x is my explanatory or independent variable and this is my dependent variable. So, this causation there, there could be certain examples for this. Uh, for instance, uh, in winter the sale of the uh, warm clothes is high. I took the example before. So, that is the independent variable uh, is my the temperature, the chilling cold and dependent variable there is y is my sale of the winter warm clothes here. So, also you can take the example vice versa here the temperature rise would uh, increase the electricity consumption. In some other electri electricity consumption is high because of the use of air conditions, fans and some other cooling equipments. So, uh, this can be an example here for common response. So, for confounding I can say there is another variable z that is uh, mercury say uh, purchasing power that is affecting y the sales, but it is not affecting x here. So, there is a causal relationship. Another example I can take the weight of the car, weight of car versus mileage. Simple causal effect would be higher the weight, lower would be the mileage. The uh, more weight would be there, more energy would be used to pull the car. Okay? So, that is a simple causal relationship. The common response here would be that a type of the car, the z variable here it would be the type of the car, it can be a van, it can be a SUV, it can be a uh, luxury car, it can be a sports car, the type of the car influences the weight plus other effectors that affect the gas mileage of the car. Okay? Now, the confounding factor here would be the z here could be actually the while the weight has a causal effect, it actually effect cannot be accurately ascertained since the weight is confounded with the number of factors here. These number of factors can be uh, the type of engine, the horsepower and so on. So, next is conducting experiments. It is the most powerful way to deal with causality here. When we conduct the experiments, we see the dependent variable and independent variable, we conduct the experiments and control the other uh, uh, lacking variables here, the hidden variables or other affecting variables. We conduct experiments between them and this gives us result that one variable causes the uh, changes in another variable or not. So, conducting experiment is a strong or powerful tool to deal with causality. So, to conduct the experiments, first thing is we divide the, we divide our uh, groups into two parts, one is experimental group and the control group. We have the treatments here that is the experimental manipulation or all the sets here and we do not have any treatment in the control group. So, we should make it sure that there is a random assignment of the experiments here. So, while we do the experiments, it is very important to validate what we do. We actually divide our data into two parts if we have suppose uh, 100 observations, we first do the experiments, uh, we just first analyze the 90 observations or 80 observations, keep the 20 observations for validation. So, validation of what we do is very important. So, with this I would like to conclude uh, my lecture on correlation. Uh, we did the Spearman's rank correlation, we did the demonstration on the Excel sheet here, then we saw the correlation and causality. 
and uh, for now thank you